Hi everyone, Sarah Vaccaro, and I'm going to share with you today some of the signs and symptoms that you may feel or experience after you have been abused. And there's different kinds of abuse. I'm not just talking physical, uh, but emotional, mental, spiritual as well. And those are generally the most impactful. So we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms after abuse today, because most often when you're in a toxic and unhealthy relationship, you don't see it because you're experiencing the gaslighting, you're experiencing the love bombing, you're experiencing this cognitive dissonance of like really trying to figure out exactly what's going on and oftentimes your attention is directed elsewhere like your job or your children or just trying to figure out like is this person just in a bad mood or you know if I do this differently like they requested will I get a different result next time so it takes a while sometimes to actually understand what you're experiencing and for it to all make sense. And generally, if it's in the form of a relationship and you do research on the term narcissist, every light bulb comes on. Everything starts to make sense and you start to see all the information that's out there and put these puzzle pieces together that have felt like have just been like thrown up for a while. So it really does start to come together and make sense when you hear the term narcissist, you start learning about it and then you start kind of taking that information that you learned and applying it back to your relationship and really seeing what's going on. Uh, but there are a lot of signs and symptoms you may not even be aware of uh, that are very common that you may be experiencing after you have experienced this type of emotional, mental, spiritual abuse. So sometimes, like I said, we don't recognize that we've been abused. We do realize something's wrong, something's off. We get that gut feeling, that intuition, and it's just completely off. But it's hard hard to place and pinpoint exactly where that came from, especially if it was not like a severely very traumatic event. This goes back to our childhood too, and we think, you know, I had a really good childhood. Uh, I can't, there's nothing like one specific thing that happened. Uh, so we often will rationalize abuse by being our own fault or saying it's bad luck or any other weird false creation that our mind comes up with because our job the mind of our job job of our mind excuse me is to protect us and keep us safe so it does that at all regard until we come to terms with what's, what's happening you cannot begin to heal uh, I get a lot of questions about like well I'm still married I want I just want my partner to get help if your partner is a true narcissist they're not going to get help. They're not going to change. So it's just becoming aware of this. Or if you are suffering these, uh, it, there's there's different severities of them, and we're going to go over the different signs of them. But some of them you may notice last for a couple days. Some last for a couple of years, and they often will get worse. Actually, always get worse until you really come to terms with them and heal them. Um, know that you are not expected to manage this pain alone. If you stay alone, if you stay silent, it will just get worse. So please reach out. Um, I, I specialize in helping people with this, but there are many others as well. So some of the signs are cognitive signs. Cognitive is your, your brain, right? Like cognitively, that's like cognitive dissonance. So you become disassociated from what's actually going on. And some of the signs and symptoms of this are confusion. You're constantly confused. Nightmares. You guys, I just had a really crazy nightmare last night. It was very off for me, but even years after being out, you still get these nightmares because your brain is trying to put into place uh, what is processing without saying too much. Um, an ex-narcissist of mine has uh, experience with guns and weapons and when my daughter goes to bed at night, that's part of our prayers is she says, uh, please let my daddy keep shooting bad guys. And Oftentimes I can dismiss this and just simply fall asleep, but last night it led to like really weird dreams that were off. So nightmares are very common. 
uncertainty, like just questioning everything that you do, feeling very uncertain, that indecisiveness or hypervigilance, uh, suspiciousness, and uh, we've talked about that a lot, is you find it really difficult to trust people. You're just suspicious of everyone, like there's an ulterior motive and you can't take what they say at face value because you've been so abused that what you took at face value before actually turned out to be quite different from the reality. So now you're very hyper vigilant, you're very suspicious, you're constantly blaming other people, uh, you have very poor problem solving, you doubt yourself all the time, poor abstract thinking. So you can see what's going on right here, but we've talked about this before as well as that blinder analogy. You can focus on right here, but you have a really difficult time panning out and seeing the bigger picture because you become so hypervigilant and focused. Uh, poor concentration of memory. This is a result of the gaslighting and the second guessing and the questioning yourself. Uh, you often lose sense of time. So you have a disorientation of time, uh, people or places. Like you kind of go, where, how did I get here, right? Like, because your mind has been such trauma response for so long, uh, the fight, fight, freeze, and the other one is fawn. And I just got a message today, and, and I have done a video specifically about fawning, this fourth trauma response. It is a response brought about by the attempt to avoid conflict and trauma by appeasing people. So fawning leads to codependency, leads to pleasing people. When you're a child, it can be defined as being a good kid in order to escape mistreatment from an abusive or neglectful parent. We talk about that a lot, the childhood emotional neglect. Another cognitive response from abuse is you'll notice this heightened or lowered awareness. So you're hyper aware all the time, or you're just completely checked out all the time. Your awareness is very lowered. So uh, also, like I said, an increased or decreased awareness of your surroundings. So these are common cognitive trauma responses and the behavioral trauma responses you'll notice are withdrawal. A lot of people like this whole COVID thing feel like I've been isolating, self-isolating long before this COVID stuff ever happened because you withdraw, you withdraw from your family, you withdraw from your friends, you start to become very antisocial. The narcissist loves this because it gives them more power and control. The less people that you have to connect to and reach out to, the more you reach out and try to connect with them. And then they can tell you what your reality is. So you become very disconnected with the actual reality because they have more power, control, and manipulation over you. So you'll notice behaviorally you become antisocial. You stop checking in with your family and friends. You stop going out. You stop being happy. Uh, you'll notice an inability to rest. You are exhausted. But then the second you lay your head down on your pillow, it's like, ding, your brain just turns on and you can't fall asleep. Or if you do fall asleep from like just over exhaustion, you can't stay asleep. So you'll notice like intensified pacing, kind of like a dog or an animal in the cage or at the zoo. You just, you're that trauma response, like get me out of here, get me out of here. And you'll notice maybe you start to pace. Uh, you have intensified pacing or like erratic movements like that you get startled easily because your mind is somewhere else. So behaviorally you get startled. Uh, you have this a change maybe in speech patterns. I remember when trying to communicate and speak with my ex-narcissist, I couldn't even get words out. And he used to mimic that and he used to make fun of me and go, oh, yeah, 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 uh, uh. and then of course I would just cry. So your speech pattern changes. You know what you want to say, but you have a really difficult time saying it. That's because of the cognitive trauma response leads to a behavioral trauma response. Uh, you become hyper alert to your environment. Uh, you increase things to numb, like you increase your food intake. You become much more of an emotional eater. Many people I work with have told me that they have gained a lot of weight or the opposite. Maybe you stop eating. So there's an emotional response to eating where you ate more or you eat less. Either way, your weight changes. The same is true with alcohol or anything else that you're using to avoid or numb. Maybe you just binge watch, binge watch TV or you're on social media all the time and it's a way of checking out. So increased alcohol consumption, like having to have a glass of wine every single night or when you get home to just feel somewhat normal to not deal with this. 
or a change in usual communication. Usually you're happy and you're bubbly and you like going out, connecting with your friends. You feel like you don't even know who you are anymore. Your normal communication changes. So that's a behavioral response. Next we'll talk about the emotional responses to trauma. So heightened senses of fear, of guilt, of grief, of panic, of denial, anxiety, agitation, irritation. You'll notice you're very irritable, especially if you have kids or friends. Like you just start to snap or go off on them. You start to feel very depressed. You start to feel very, very angry, like you're just angry all the time. You don't even need to have something specific to happen, but you're just very angry, uh, very apprehensive with a lot of things. You'll notice you use a lot more caution than you used to. Maybe you used to be someone who was like, go with the flow and dive right in. And now it's like, well, I, I don't know. Let me, so you kind of back off. You become very apprehensive uh, or you have emotional outbursts, whether it's at your boss or at your family members or your loved ones, your kids, your family, you'll feel overwhelmed just all the time. And this often expresses this heaviness. In sessions, we work on releasing like the heaviness in your chest, the tightness in your throat, the heaviness in your stomach, your legs, all over you feel this weight is just on you and after you work on that you just feel lighter you feel lifted and liberated uh, you'll notice another response is the loss of emotional control maybe you used to feel like okay something happened i can handle this and now like i can't handle this so that feeling of like it's too much and you'll notice that causes inappropriate emotional responses to things maybe somebody like something simple you're driving down the road and they cut too close in front of you and you lose it and you start screaming and cussing at them and honking at them and speeding up cutting them off slamming on your brakes it's like come on just back off the gas and let them go but it's a trauma response an emotional trauma response it's just inappropriate and you notice those things are showing up they're more prevalent in your life now. It's all connected. It's all related. And then here are the physical ones. Chills, excessive thirst or fatigue. You're just con you're exhausted all the time. Nausea, fainting, twitches, vomiting. These are the ones that often lead you to go to the doctor and the doctor says, here you go. Here's this prescription. Go take this. Come back in whatever, six weeks or whatever. You'll notice vomiting, uh, dizziness, chest pain. Here's a great one. Headaches. Headaches that lead to migraines. That chest pain to elevated blood pressure. I've worked with people who've ended up in the ER because their blood pressure was so high. You guys, it has an emotional connection. This physical response. Um, tremors. Uh, muscle tremors like shocked this is a huge one grinding of teeth I used to have to wear a $300 night guard because I would grind my teeth so hard at night when I was married to the ex-narcissist your jaw your body gets tense and tight and then it's trying to release itself at night and I would grind so hard that I had to doctors or dentists are talking about skin grafting that is extremely painful. So you'll notice these physical responses, difficulty breathing, that like shallow breathing that you can't take a long, deep breath. Can you can't catch your breath, the shortness of breath. Profuse sweating is another one. Visual difficulties. You guys, all of this is related to emotional experiences and abuse. So know this. Healing is not linear. It begins with the awareness. It begins with the knowledge, the awareness that the person that you are engaged with or were engaged with has narcissistic traits and is on that spectrum. And not just that, we're not going around diagnosing narcissists. This is about you and noticing how it is showing up in your body and impacting your life. So healing from it is not linear. It's not like, oh, they're a narcissist. I'm going to go no contact and then I'm going to work on myself and I'm just going to get better. Every day is going to be better than the day before. That's the overall goal, but that not the, you know, two steps forward, one step back. Healing is not linear. It oftentimes feels like you're on a roller coaster, but you do want to be moving forward and reading a book is great. Traditional talk therapy 
feels okay sometimes. It feels good to just get it out and have somebody listen to you without judging you because oftentimes you've isolated from family and friends and they're sick of hearing it or they don't understand because they haven't experienced it themselves. So the first step obviously is learning about this and then using the resources um, available to you. And there are many, books are good. I know Psychopath 3 is a very common book that a lot of uh, people I've worked with, it just, just help them, but it helps you understand the narcissist. I work with you on helping you understand you and how all of this is playing out in your life. So uh, I hope that like this, this video does help you understand what you're experiencing or maybe somebody that you know. So um, thank you guys. Please like, love, and share and continue to use this as a resource on your journey to healing. And then if you really are ready to go deep within and break those subconscious patterns and beliefs that have led up to and caused you to be where you're at in life right now, which if you have any of these symptoms we just talked about, I'm sure are not ones you want to keep for much longer. So I'd love to connect with you and talk about how we get you there. So thank you guys. Hope you all have a wonderful day.